Well, our scripture lesson this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 60th chapter, beginning of the first verse. Hear now these words. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, and the wealth of nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come, and they shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I love being around small children and reading about what they say, because when you're around small children, you never know what they're going to say or how they're going to react. And I get to every week when preschool is in session to go talk to our two, three, and four-year-olds. It's a lot of fun. When another pastor was sharing at a time before Christmas that he took his three-year-old preschool class on a tour of the church so that he could tell them the story of Christmas. And he said over the years, the Christmas window with the three kings, Mary and Jesus, is a preschool favorite. And when he took this current class to that window, we have those nice stained glass windows, he asked the class who the baby was. And one little girl right immediately said, that's Jesus. And then he asked, who was the lady carrying him in her arms? And another child said, that's his mother. And he said, what's her name? And another child said, her name was Mary. And then he asked, those three men, who are they? And then there was a long silence kind of as the kids were thinking about this. And finally, one little kid um, piped up and said, oh, it's the grandparents. <laughs> Had three of them, three guys uh, that we do today. But today is sun, this Sunday we celebrate Epiphany. The actual day is tomorrow. January 6th is the day of Epiphany. This is the 12th day of Christmas. See, Christmas isn't over yet. This is the last day of Christmas. Christmas season lasts 12 days, and tomorrow we celebrate the day of Epiphany, and we do it on the first Sunday in January, typically, where we remember that the wise men came, and they followed that light. And if you live in South America, tomorrow is the day you get to open presents as a child, because that's when they do it. If Jesus didn't get his presents till the wise men came, you don't get your presents either. That's kind of the way they do it. They don't put cookies out for Santa. They put hay out for the camels. It's kind of interesting. But for the wise men, it was a light they followed to find the newborn king that they sought. And in finding that one, their life was changed. And Isaiah's writing from chapter 60 is a prominent passage for Epiphany. It's here we read what the prophet foretold. And all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. This is what the wise men fulfilled in this prophecy. But they followed a star. They had a light to guide them. And in life, this is what's so true for all of us. Do we have a light that guides us? When we're feeling in the dark, in a fog, or in confusion, and not sure which way to go, is there a light in our lives that helps us find our way that we need to go? Professor Harold DeWolf, in his book, The Religious Revolt Against Reason, tells of an experience he had as a young man. He was up in Massachusetts with a friend in the Atlantic Ocean, and they were swimming at night. And they went out there, and it was kind of like the water was filled for a phosphorescent kind of thing. You could just stir up the water, and it would just kind of glow. And they thought this was neat, because each time the waves rolled in, it was like this cascade of light there. And they would just dip their hands in it. But they wanted to get out there swimming, so he said, we swam out further just so we could ride the waves in. And he says, as soon as I got out there and I turned around, all I saw was complete, utter darkness. 
I had no way of knowing if I turned around and by facing the shore anymore. He says, I looked up to the sky to see, to get my bearings. And he says, all I could see were the northern lights coming in. It was just a confusion of light. There was no star to fix my way. And utter terror just came upon me. He says, I began to swim, luckily, back to the way I thought shore was with this utter fear engulfing me. And I think all too many people are living their lives this way. While there is physical life, there is not light to help them see their way. They wander from day to day, wondering what it will bring. They seek escape from the lack of purpose. And I think some churches find themselves in this same state. They say they need a proclaimed Christ is Lord, but there's no passion, no purpose, no direction, no light in the church. And we need to discover that light and follow it. A man named Rufus Jones once said, it is of no avail to talk of the church in general, the church in the abstract, unless the concrete particular local church which the people attend can become a center of light and leading, of inspiration and guidance for its specific community. See, that's what we're to be about, a center of light and leading in this community for a purpose of letting people know there is a love out there. There is a God out there. See, when Isaiah wrote this passage, the people were confused. They were in exile. They'd been in Babylon, taken captive, the temple destroyed, their whole way of life tipped upside down. And now it's been some 40 years and they've been living this way and Isaiah's writing to them saying, a change is coming. There's a new king in town. King Cyrus has defeated the Babylonians and one of the things he said is, you can go back and rebuild your temple. But even in that, there's confusion because as the people hear that, some say, look, we've already got a good life here. We don't want to go. We kind of like it here. And others are saying, we need to go back. And when they go back, they're met with the people who weren't taken into captivity. And then there again, there is struggle and conflict between the people who come back and the people who stayed. Kind of like what we are. No matter where we go, there's conflict and people with opinion and we're yelling at each other. And that's what Isaiah is writing into that. Listen again what he says. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, the thick and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Think about that statement. Arise, shine, for your light is coming. It is not just get up and go. It's get up and shine. It's get up and you got purpose. It's get up and let the love shine in you. It didn't like I'd be feel some mornings like, oh God, I gotta get up again. Have you ever had those mornings? You just <laughs> the alarm clock goes off and you're like, I am not ready. Isaiah say, No, get up and let your light shine. It's a great day. And he doesn't discount the darkness. He doesn't say there isn't darkness out there. He says, Look, darkness covers the earth. There's a thick darkness over the people. The darkness is out there. Gloom so thick that you could cut it with a knife. Darkness so cold that it cast a pallor, pallor over the whole world. Despair so cruel that it squenches joy. And silence is laughter. Darkness is there. We have darkness in our lives sometimes that wants to close us in. But here the prophet says, the darkness cannot determine who we are. The darkness cannot direct our lives because there is a light that will shine in the darkness. Whatever is going on in your life that is not right, it does not have to dictate your future. We forget that so much that the pain we're in, the darkness we're in, does not have to dictate the future we are headed to. That there is a light to guide us. We need to follow that light. And there's always that light available to us. And it's Christ is his word. And I love that they describe the word as a light unto our feet. I love that passage. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. We forget that sometimes because we think we know the Bible. We hear it, but we don't ever really put it into practice. 
We're kind of like this mother was telling a story about her young son. She said he just had a constant thing. He would just run out into the street. And we would tell him over and over again, you cannot run out into the street. And he'd say, yes, I know. And next thing you know, he's out running out in the street. And they would yell at him again and punish him again. And he'd say, yeah, I know. And he'd do it again. She said, one day we're driving down the street. And as we're driving down, there's a dead dog in the middle of the street. And the son looks at this, sees this, and he's real quiet for a while. And then he says, is that why you don't want me to run out in the middle of the street? And they say, yes. It's not until he could see it in concrete that it made it real to him. And see, that's the way we are sometimes. We hear it, but we don't make it real. I love what Thomas H. Crozier once said that speaks to this. He said, to undomesticate God, to see God in places where we are convinced God would never be is to be able to hope and believe again. See, sometimes we want to control God. We want to only see him in certain spots. We cannot believe that God would go to here or love this person or love that person or go to there. I've always told people, if you really want to find Christ, go to where the most hurting people are, the darkest places, because that's where Christ is alive and working for those people. Isaiah saw into the future when it would dawn on nations how great the God of Hebrews was. And when it dawned on them, they would not keep this to themselves, but they would pour out in their praise and adoration and worship. When we finally see the light and allow God's glory to shine on us, we cannot help but tell other people. It should change us. It should just cause us to just shout from the mountaintops of this love. But too often we think we know what we're doing and we're just kind of grinding it out. I love the story that a pastor shared in one of his sermons. I get most of my good stuff from other pastors. I don't steal it from them. I'm always telling them I'm just borrowing it. But it's about this man. He went into a local hardware store, and he, was, he needed to cut firewood because he's got a new fireplace. And the guy says, you need one of these chainsaws. They can cut 10 cords of wood a day with this chainsaw. And he looked at him, and he bought this chainsaw. And he went out there, and he was eager to use it. And he went out using this thing, and at the end of the first day, he could barely cut half a cord of wood. And the guy, yet he promised you could cut 10 cords. And he said, just to get that half cord, I was plumb, wore out. It took me 10 hours a day, and I was wore out. And after about three days of this, he took the chainsaw back to the hardware store, just totally frustrated and almost angry. He lays it down on the counter, and the owner of the store comes up and says, hey, what's, what's up, Frank? How are you? And he says, not good. This blankety-blank saw you sold me is no good. You promised it would cut 10 cords of wood today, and I can only barely get half a cord of wood cut a day. And the owner goes, well, let me look at it. And he flipped a couple switches, and he pulled the crank, and he pulled that thing on, and Frank jumped back and said, what's that noise? He'd been cutting wood by just taking that chainsaw and rubbing it back and forth on the wood. <laughs> but picture that, that there are people outside who have a chainsaw in their hand and they're rubbing it back and forth trying to do life. They're not using the power available to them. We think we know who God is. We think we know where God is going to be, the love he has for who and who's not. And so we understand and we don't get into Scripture. We don't understand why we need to pray on a daily basis. We don't understand why we need to read the Bible every day. You need to be, read the Bible every day because I can tell you, I've read it many, many times, and there are still passages I read today, and it's like, wow, I never saw that before. Because it's a living word. It will teach, speak to you today where you are in your life. And we think we already know it. We've read it once, done it, got the t-shirt. I see all the t-shirts every now and then. Y'all got them all. But we need to live it and use it. That's how we let the glory of the Lord shine. Don't be that guy out there with that chainsaw just trying to cut it with the power turned off. Take hold of what God has given you and use it to change not only your life, 
your darkness to the darkness of others, to let the light shine on you so it shines on others. Arise, shine, the glory of the Lord has come upon you. Let us pray.